welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast uh, with me, the notorious uh, Chris Stark. We've got Ryan here. All good? Doing well, mate. Doing really, really good. I'm on holidays today. Oh, and yeah? I've cut into my holidays just to come and spend oh, time with you guys. You do. That's what he does for us. Um, ditched Beautiful. my mum in the pub, just left her with a dog. And you go have paints with the lads. So. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, this next part of the podcast great. is sponsored by Brewdog. We've got Ryan here who's going to uh, tell us what we're drinking today before we get stuck in properly to this week's pod. So as you probably know by now, once a month we get Ryan here, the bartender, and he serves us up a new beer. Um, always feels like there's quite a lot of pressure here because this is the thing that we're then going to be drinking for the next few weeks. Uh, Ryan, we need a beer that's going to show us a good time. Uh, it's going to basically be with us for the next few weeks of this podcast. What have you got? Yeah, so we've we've decided to go with um, something sessionable. We know you love sessionable. We know you love that word, Crouchy. It's a great word, that. Mm. Um, and we've gone with Wingman. So it's our brand new 4.3% session IPA. Now, normally I would sit here and I'd tell you, all about the beer we would you know I would, I would tell you the ins and outs and we get a little bit geeky about it but we're not going to do that today and um, we're going to tell you some things that the beer isn't um so this beer isn't in the sense of what every other brewdog beer has been in the past you know we like to get a little bit geeky about it we like to we like to sip that beer and talk about the tasting notes but this beer is about pints with your mates um, it's not about chatting about the malts, the hops, the yeast, the water profile. It's about getting together with your pals and talking about the game at the weekend. Um, Wingman, in essence, is here to make sure you have a good time. And that's why we make it sessionable. It's about being able to sit in the pub with the guys for, for hours on end and just put the worlds to rights and just enjoy this beautiful, refreshing, crisp, fruit forward IPA. When you say sessionable, what what does that entail? Does that just mean lots of it? We're talking about the ABV or the strength of the beer being on the low side, shall oh, we say. So 4.3, so can... it's manageable. Yeah, okay. You know, it's not going to knock your head off. Yeah. Um, it's just going to it's, it's going to keep you at a nice steady pace. You're going to have a great day and you're going to keep mm. all your clothes on. I mean, <laughs> I'm not here to make any guarantees. <laughs> okay. All right. I like this. It's a nice beer. This. I'm a fan of this. It's a nice yeah. beer. It's it's just it's it's it is beautifully balanced. I said I wasn't going to tell you about the beer, but I probably should. Ooh. It is nicely balanced. It's for an IPA. It is it is nice and hoppy, but it still has that nice malt profile that you get from a pale ale. So the two worlds collide and mm. just make it nice and citrusy and mm. pleasurable. And what say. is the what's the deal behind the the, the bluebird? Is that that's the wingman? I so imagine. the big blue birds is our answer to big birds. Um, but he's going to make sure that you have a good time. He's not going to teach you your ABCs, but he's going to make sure you have a great time. Um, he's here to kind of ensure that the beers keep flowing, the good conversation keeps going, mm. and uh, make sure nobody has a terrible time. He's the, he's the good voice on the shoulder. Yeah. So that, that's what you're saying. The wingman is. You're saying this is the beer that sort of is is there to kind of. Um, Assist you with having a good night, yeah. like any good sort yeah. of wingman. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, if, oh, yeah, yeah. so if Steve Jobs had a big speech, for instance, <laughs> you know, like, you'd have to have that little wingman's help him along. Yeah. Oh, exactly. He was launching the new phone. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think wingman would look as good <laughs> in the uh, Steve Jobs yeah. uh, turtleneck as yeah. Sid's yeah. does, but yeah. you know, yeah. we can get okay, back. Okay, well, that's great. Oh, well, basically, we... wingman is, is obsessed with making sure your night out goes well. The guy who will do whatever is necessary to ensure you and your squad have the best night. Uh, the sort of person every friendship group needs. Yeah, we've had um, we've had a lot of tales of these sort of legendary nights out on this podcast, haven't we? Yeah, I think it's safe to say uh, we're gold medalists when it comes to a night out. We've got mm -hmm. one tonight, uh, which is going to be a session, actually. Beautiful. So, so I want to hear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, over the next month, uh, to celebrate the launch of Wingman, we'll give you that Peter Crouch podcast guide to a perfect night out. Uh, we want you to get involved. Yeah, exactly yeah. that, Pete. So here's how you can get involved. We're going to be putting a post out on the podcast social channels. If you're not following them, get following them. That's Instagram, Twitter, or X, if you're that way inclined, like Steve Jobs over here. Okay. Um, we're going to be inviting you to tag a mate who is your wingman. So the person who regularly organises or, or saves a big night out. I'm sure you're thinking of that person right now. And we need you to give us an example of them being that sort of hero. So we want to know how they're a good wingman. The best entries will get read out on the podcast and you might get invited to the wingman launch 
at Brewdog Waterloo, right here where we do the podcast. So we'll get to meet you and hang out with you. So get thinking of that one person who's just a brilliant wingman. Uh, get onto Instagram or X. Make sure you you follow us here on our socials. And uh, it could be you here with your mate. Mm. How cool is that? Exactly yeah. right. And you can do that on your iPhone, iPad, <laughs> mini iPad, <laughs> laptop, <Yeah>. or Mac. <laughs> Hello, welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch, uh, joined by Chris Stark and the notorious SID, as usual. Uh, but today we've got a very special guest, Mr. Jolian Lescott. Legend. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> strong, that's it. Strong, strong. He's strong. He's strong. Come on. <laughs> Big in the game. Very, very fashionable man, I've always thought as yeah? well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't want to turn this into a fashion show and I can hardly talk, but Steve, mm. let's talk about your clobber today. <laughs> oh, to oh, wow. Wow. I see, oh, do you know what? I see you buying this up earlier <laughs> on, right? As well. And I was thinking, I was going, because oh. <laughs> I see him, he's down here, he's got some, he's got some voice. Oh, so I was like, you know, what's he remind me of? <laughs> nah. Steve Jobs! <laughs> that weren't the one you had on before. Oh, do you want to see <laughs> that? weren't the one. The other one I was thinking What did is, you type in? Steve Jobs? Uh, roll neck. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. It's not really a roll neck, is it? It's, well, like, it's, like a, it's like a mini. S- Steve Jobs used to like <laughs> this though, didn't he? Yeah. Like when he was when he was bringing out like the new iPhone. He just... <laughs> Steve trying to make uh, iPhone 15 just come out. Yeah, it did. It yeah, just come out. Yeah, maybe. Same since, name, since same name, and that. Since you're trying to make the podcast diary of a CEO, doesn't matter. He's gonna give it. He's gonna give it everything. The other one I was thinking is if we had a chain out, we got the Rock. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> Wow, that's an early kickoff. Yeah. Yeah, Steve Jobs, me. I like. I like. I like the Steve you're Jobs. You're not feeling it, though. Well, I love it, mate. I think yeah. it's great. I might not wear it again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Steve, I'm not. I'm not one to tour, honestly. But it, it, oh, it deserves to mention. Yeah. So, okay. welcome to the podcast. Ooh. Thank um, you. This is what we do, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I've seen. I've seen. Yeah, welcome along. <laughs> so, well, we go. I mean, we go. We go way back, right? So, yeah. I remember playing against Jolie, and I mean, early days. I think maybe even. I'm trying to think of youth team days. I know it's definitely QPR. Yeah, yeah. When we were 19. Yeah. Tough games. Even then. <laughs> well, on yeah. a record, I believe we looked into it. Out of the two of you, if you were to go head to head, um, Jolian, you've won more games against Crouchy yeah. than vice versa. It doesn't work like that, though. How many, how many games has he scored in? Well, this is it. How do four. you want to judge it? Down here. Four goals in 14 matches. Oh, I'll take that. Yeah. Portsmouth, because we had some one Portsmouth games as well. Few, uh, well, it got me here. It's like well, Wolves Portsmouth was 01 02 season. Jesus. Portsmouth Everton was uh, 08 09. And uh, Stoke 11. They were the games I scored in. Yeah. But, yeah I didn't play the Stoke game. That was the World, the world Class Valley. No, I'll tell you uh, what that game was. I think yeah. it was the game. I didn't play in that I game. I think I handballed it. Yeah? Yeah. I, I think Micah sure. scored in that game. Good goal, though. That one was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the handball um, one. <laughs> did you, did, when count. you played against. You, each other, did you tend to go or, on doing, or go away from or, or go on to the other centre half? Always pull on someone else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, regularly, you see a dominant centre half, right? You always pull on the other one. And that yeah. old class Jolian has that, and not just because he's here, but you yeah. know, obviously strong, mm. you know, at pace. It was hard for me kind of to, to I'm trying to think who else you, who you, who'd have played with. Who'd you, who would have been? It, Wolves, it was yeah. would have been Paul Butler. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember uh, yeah. And, Remember that team? Yeah, Paul Butler. Like, uh, but uh, before that would have been... Everton uh, then? Mind you, that Ever- that Everton yeah, team Everton was horrible. Team strong, yeah. Yeah. I was probably left back then as well. Yeah, he would have been. Yeah. That, but that was yeah. a mad si- situation. Yeah, you were Baines yeah. for a while. Well, it wasn't even that because I'd never played there. And then my second season, I'd spoke to the manager about not wanting to play there. Because yeah. I think I'm not going to progress my career as a left back. I was never going to mm. dislodge Ashley Cole from mm. England. And it was going to be hard enough dislodging Rio and JT. And Sol Campbell kind of Ooh. thing as centre half, but I had a better chance at doing that. And then he said, "Ah, oh, I can get a left back if you're telling me you'll play there. Um, I won't buy one." I said, "You need to buy one because I don't want to play there." Um, and then yeah, he bought Leighton Baines and didn't play him for like half a season. Mm. And like, it was weird because it was like a weird atmosphere. It's like he didn't want to play me, but he was playing me. And then he kind of didn't bought. Leighton and didn't play him and but me and Leighton become really wanted, close was that out of a kind of protest of you not playing in that position it was working in the greatest respect like it would it obviously worked with Leighton there but it wasn't not working with me there and mm. I think after that season I got like 10 goals so I was going to ask you, when, yeah. that, that, I mean how can you drop someone who's getting <laughs> <laughs> double yeah, figures from yeah, left back I think I was like top three goals <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. and it weren't like no pens yeah no no, 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 no pens, I remember the season it was yeah, yeah, it, was, it was kind of a wild one so 
yeah, it obviously warranted me playing, but still, in terms of me progressing in the team, I'm sure it's a better team with Leighton Baines left back than Jordan mm. Lescott left back. You say no penalties. Were, were you good at penalties? No. Oh, you weren't? We, when we went to the Euros, 2012, and it went to Pens against Italy, I said, I said in the huddle, I will go after Joe Hart. Like, <laughs> oh, really? This is <laughs> not my job. Yeah. No, I can I can. Yeah. You gotta know your place. My job was to get us to Pens. <laughs> 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 that was my job. <laughs> deal, deal. Uh, <laughs> well, there's there's, a, let's take a, there's a lot of players like that. Yeah, so where do you always stand on that? Because for me, it feels like the outfield players need to go before the. No <laughs> chance. No, no, Why? No, no, Come on. Why? Starkey. Keepers kick the ball every day. Saying, yeah, like, they, they practice striking. Ooh. I think keepers should go the, like. Yeah, but you're talking, five. you know, it isn't about technique. Like, that isn't it. Like, well, I've, I've worked in coaching and tried to replicate penalty shootouts. And it's like, the technique is the easy part. That walk mm. from the halfway line, yeah. it's like 10 miles mm. long. Yeah. yeah. I'm not my, doing my, that. my problem with pens is like, when you're forward, you feel like you, it's kind of your job. Yeah, it? Like, yeah, you, yeah. I, I think if I'm a centre forward, number nine, right? And I'm, people are looking to me <laughs> for goals. And I go, nah. <laughs> yeah, I was on the 15. <laughs> Score another chance to score? Absolutely not. I think yeah. you've got to do it. Otherwise, it's no different to, you know, it being expected. You have to come to penalties. The goalie goes, no, nah, I don't fancy penalties. Peter, you go and go. Yeah, yeah, how many yeah. times do you like see that. keepers get changed, though? So well, obviously, there's a reason for that. So there's a reason why not everyone is meant to take a penalty. Yeah. So that, and I was that guy. But mm. you would go after the goalie. Oh, yeah, choice. yeah, yeah. Joe, but Joe Hart was confident. Like, he wasn't an average penalty mm. taker. He, he could take a penalty. Mm. And like I said, it wasn't the penalty. It wasn't actual technique I've took a penalty and I could, yeah you can score pens but it was the the walk I'm mm. thinking do I walk fast or walk slow like, so do, do you I look like I'm in a rush do you yeah. yeah am I in a rush to get there and then I'm nervous or am I just lay back and nah uh, that, that, that walk like, I've done it a few times and like that walk I don't like it it, you do start thinking about you know, if I was to walk from here to the, to the tube station now, right? I wouldn't think about my walk once. But like from from the centre circle to taking a pen, there you, go. you are thinking about You've Everything. Got foot placement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> way, way it's placed. Do I pick up the ball? Do I juggle the ball? Ooh, do I yeah, no. do I pass the ball down there? Like, yeah. do you? There's so many factors to to think about before you even take the penalty. Yeah. And you wouldn't normally do that. No, no I get it. Especially if you're trying to give like confidence as well, or try to yeah. mind games that, with the yeah. goalie. What was your thing, Steve? Did you manage to block it out, or did you have the sort of nervy walk of? Yeah, is it like a walk of shame? It's no, not yeah, really. Yeah, is no, it? it's, it's one of them. Stride of pride. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's one of them where you, you're taking it all in because you're at your comfort zone straight away. But you're looking where, like sometimes the ball might not even be there. The ball, the ball, the ball might be like on the right hand side of the penalty box. So you have got to go yeah. and get before, like. And mm. then your keeper might come up to you and then the, their keeper might be on the <laughs> penalty spot. The ref's there. The crowd are giving you stick. Yeah, there's a lot the, going on it now. The thing yeah. is with football, like, it never stops still. Like, golfers, that's why I've got so much respect for golfers. Like, the moment you stand over a ball, you've got everyone's watching you in that moment, right? And but with football, it's like, once you're in the game, you're in the game, I think. Yeah. That's right. And until mm. until they're, they're in that situation where you have to do this and, they, and you know that everyone in the whole stadium, everyone at home, everyone is discussing you. <laughs> everyone's, so, everyone's yeah, a lot. It's a lot. thinking about how you're going to do how you're but that do disappoints me that in a way this pressure comes from this massive walk so so what do we need there's a lot of rule changes that happen should it not just be then that everyone when they wait can wait sort of uh, 10 yards bucks. just yeah no, no, no because no, that adds no. to the pressure Why? because Why? 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 You want that suspense? Mm. I want to see. I of wanna, course, you want to see that. That separates the teams. Then you just get in multiple penalties. But then, shouldn't scored. you be doing that in training? Shouldn't you be you practicing can't, walking? Can't, because it's not the same. It's not the same. There's not. There's not thousands of fans watching training. Yeah. No. But what an amazing thing it would be if a manager did have you at the halfway line no, practicing walking. Oh, we yeah, yeah, yeah we've done that before. That. Yeah, but it yeah. doesn't work. What do you mean you've done that? We've done it before. Penalty shootout. You practice that walk, and and like they've had speakers by the pitch with noise. Yeah. Yeah. I've done that. Like, I've done, you know. You could be yeah. tried fucking yeah. everything to be fair. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that bit worked. <laughs> we created a wheel, did you think? Yeah. <laughs> so you have, yeah. Hold on, you have speakers yeah. playing yeah. like yeah. Ag atmosphere and Aggie yeah. crowd, no crowd noise. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, man. I didn't know that sounds like something off Mike Bassett. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's probably why we never won one. <laughs> should we take it? Um, well, should we take it right back then? Yeah. Should we go right back to where it started mm. for you, Julian? So, where um, did it start? Was it was of your wolves, wolves as a yeah, kid, right? Yeah. That, was it like we, we had Ledley on last week, and yeah. uh, me and Ledley obviously grew up at Tottenham yeah. together, and uh, we both said, uh, and Steve said the same about Arsenal, like um, best time of your life. I don't, oh, is yeah. that the same for you? Yeah, I think because it's not. 
it's enjoyable and it's more enjoyable than the pressure yeah. element of it and I've got kids in the game now and I've got mentoring kids I'm saying enjoy their moments because it's going to become a time where it's mm. the pressure overrides mm. everything but yeah the youth team days some of the stories that can't be said even on a podcast mm. <laughs> you know what I mean so yeah the YouTube days are mm. real and so you, when you were coming through I remember from your age kind yeah. of Lee Naylor yeah, Matt Nails, Murray Matt yeah. Murray yeah was, was they were a little bit Robbie old. was yeah. Ru Nails is the oldest out of us mm. Matt is a year old Matt is your age yeah. and then Kino is probably 18 months maybe mm. uh, a year older than you mm. So, but yeah I just got into the first team environment when Kino was there and yeah you could see that was there was a difference between him and the way most centre forwards were playing then, to be fair, and then he left that season. But yeah, it was uh, me, Kino, uh, Keith Andrews, yeah, yeah, as well. Good I team, that, that Wolves team that you got yeah, into yeah, there. Yeah. Good pros, strong, yeah. There. Kenny Miller, Incy was there, wasn't yeah. he? Oh Bucks yeah, Dennis Irwin, yeah, Mark Kennedy. They had some yeah. like proper proper men. What were they like position. when they came in? Unreal, yeah. unreal. Incy, like in, I was, I wanted to be a midfielder. You know what I mean? So like Paul Incy was like my hero, and then you, I'm playing with him. Yeah, and he would, like had a. Well, I've got a great relationship with him. See, like he could prod me and get the best out of me and make me do a little bit more. And mm. yeah, he was good. What, what, when you say he'd get you doing a bit more, what, what was that kind of thing? What do you think he most influenced about your game? The understanding of work ethic. I, I enjoyed the harder side of the game, like the extra bits. But he would kind of like say, "Are you doing this? Are you, are you living right?" And I remember there's a period where I was probably going out a little bit more and he's like, you want to leave at the end of the season and then you're going out every time and every other weekend. And I was like, yeah, that, that makes sense. And he kind of made me, whatever I did on my left side, which was my natural side, he would make me do on my, my right side. He would say 15 minutes to spend on that just so it feels comfortable, not so it was at the same level, but he, understand, he maybe understood what was needed to go to the, to the next level. Your, your first season, was it the year you went up? Yeah, well, that's yeah, we went up. Was that, was that the first year you broke in? Nah, that was oh, that was a that was a while Couple after of years that. After. Yeah, yeah. So the first year, that was the when you was at Portsmouth. Yeah, that oh, was that one oh one season. Yeah. So did you have Kevin Muscat in? QPR? Oh yeah, yeah. Muzzy was there. Yeah, hey, he was. He, he, was he, like? he, he was unreal for me, you know. But I, I understand what you're gonna say, and I know no, what you're no, gonna no, say. No, 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 no. Do you know what he had? He had the, the lot of people the whistle. Had the whistle. Oh my god. He had this whistle, right? You know, like where people go like this. No, no, no. Like, but he would do that loud. Right, the, the and people and people stop, just stop playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did that loads of times. I've people seen I've playing. seen strikers pick up the ball, thinking the ref has blew the whistle. What? So you saying he, he's he, done he could the whistle? Fix his lips. But has he actually done that on purpose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 like, so we would have really? um, we would have a, like a free kick against the ball would come in the box, and as it's coming in, like there's, there's jostling going on, he would whistle, and the strikers would just catch the ball. <laughs> And just and and then that would be humble then, you know what I mean? That's amazing. Has that it, it, actually, and that's work. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's the footage of that. Worth learning that whistle, isn't no, it? No, you, you'd be able to see it now. There's VAR cameras everywhere, but this was like you can't VAR a whistle. No, you can. <laughs> some, like his, his top lip used to like go is, a little bit yeah. stiffer. Imagine they draw the it. lines and your mouth crouches. Well, the lines zoom in. Echo, yeah, nah, yeah, you yeah, had that. Wobbling, though. <laughs> like a horse. Draw the line, did you say? So it moves. That's wild. He so he would, he would do that. He had that in the bag. Wow. Yeah. He'd also do that and then try and break your leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly broke my leg first did training he? session. Yeah. Some oh, tackle. You know when you like you're going up and you're training with the first team for the first time and I'm giving it everything and I'm like the balls come to him and I've like lent on him and he's fell over and like everyone's going ooh like oh. give him a bit and I'm like I'm just trying my hardest here. I'm not. I don't care that it's Kevin Muscat or anywhere else and he's happened again. And then I've lent on him again and kind of waited him and, that, and everyone's going, oh, hey. I'm like 16, 17. And that oh, was boy. it then. He said, you, you effing do that again. I'll break your leg. And I, he was dead serious. Did he ever try? Blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. There's I only a few people where they say that and you, and you know and you know they're actually oh, yeah, going to try. I knew that was going to be a yeah. thing. So I just didn't try again. Yeah. Just really? Let him have it. Can you whistle? <laughs> like, like, can you no. give it a proper like? No. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't that. It was the sound. It wasn't just a normal whistle. It was yeah. like a genuine. Yeah. It's, the loudest, it's whistle. the loudest whistle I've ever yeah. heard someone do without. I can't believe a you remember that. Or doing that with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't I think top managers have a good whistle. Like generally speaking, yeah, a coach decent coach. Yeah. That one. Don Howe had it when I was at Arsenal. He had it. That was one of the best for you. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good projection. I've not recovered from a jumper shout. <laughs> Steve Sidwell Jobs over there. <laughs> Could be the name of a recruitment oh. service, couldn't it? Steve Sidwell Jobs and Co. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Jobs. 
Well, yeah. so hold on, you were a Villa fan though, weren't you? As yeah, a kid, Villa fan. Right? Yeah, Villa fan. So did you used to go? Them. Yeah, my brother used to play there, so we used to get free tickets, schoolboy, and I used mm. to go with family members and grew up a Villa fan. Yeah. Yeah. Was the uh, was the aim from quite a young age to try and get Villa. to Villa oh, and play, play for Villa? Yeah, it's different now. Like, mm. there's obviously it's glamorized in a different way where. When we were growing up, you just wanted to play for the team you supported and mm. wear a kit on a Saturday. So that was the yeah, that was the goal. And I went for a trial at Villa. Uh it's probably like 13, 14. I still thought I was a midfielder then. And they told me I wasn't. So I ended up not in a disrespectful way, I ended up at Wolves mm. after back of a school trial. But um in regards to to Villa, yeah, that was the goal to play for Aston Villa. Yeah. And we'll get to that because you yeah. do eventually get there. Yeah, mm. didn't end as well as I've hoped. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a bit of a journey to get there. But your time at Everton, so it was from, so from Wolves to Everton. Yeah, how's it come about? How did you find out? And were you always king? Yeah, that was kind of that. that not specifically Everton, but that that, that kind of tier yeah. team was like, yeah, I recognised that I wasn't gonna go because I could have potentially have gone to Arsenal. Mm. Um, but I was like, I wasn't going to Arsenal to play. Probably learning stuff, but mm. I wanted to play. And I, luckily enough for me, broke into Wolves and I'd, I'd never not played. So it was more opportunity. Mm. So that kind of tier team and then Everton came and I was aware of that earlier in the season. And then I kind of had a great agreement and arrangement with Wolves that we're going to try and get promoted. If it wasn't to be, then they would let me go. And that was the case. And it was it was David Moyes, right? Yeah. Did, yeah. did you speak to him before? Yeah, I li literally met him. It was great. And... We got on and then, yeah, it kind of happened in the summer and yeah, it was, it was a great experience for me. It was, it was hard. It was a lot harder than I anticipated because, you, you know, moving away from home, you don't realise them things are will have an impact on you. Mm. And then I was 23 and then we moved up north and yeah, I'm not, I would never move back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, you've played, played for Liverpool, mm. you've been at Everton and they, they say... When you play for them clubs, it's like a fishbowl up there, isn't it? Like everyone knows your business, whether you go out, whether you stay in, and whether you're winning or losing, it's mm. tough to control, like uh, get a balance of like football and family life, or is it is it just all rolled into one when you're both up there? Probably different for Liverpool because their expectations were different to ours as an Evertonian. It was like more hope then as well. I was obviously well, I lived in Manchester because I was aware that it was quite intense in the city, but also I used to go home quite a lot. So that was closer for family to come up and me to go down. But luckily for me, kind of, the derbies were, were fair. Like, I think if Everton play Liverpool now, you kind of expect Liverpool to win where we genuinely believed we could win. But my you're, first you're, derby was 3-0. We yeah. won 3-0 in the first derby. It was a massive you, result. You were, both, were you both playing that game? Uh, yeah, I played. Yeah, the 3-0 one, I think. AJ got two. AJ I went, went, Rainer. Yeah, Rainer. Rainer. Yeah, Rainer. Yeah, Rainer. Yeah. Rainer. Yeah. Yeah. Rainer. Yeah, so was you up yeah, front? I was on the bench. Was was on the bench. bench. Yeah. That Everton team now, you look at look at Everton now and you know, sort of kind of that. Mm. I mean, under Moyes at that time, you were... Uh, cool. You were strong. It's a horrible yeah. place to go. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Well, we were challenging you guys at Spurs yeah. after that, weren't we? For yeah. like, for like, to break into the top five. Mm -hmm. And then it was like us, Villa. I'll say us is in Everton. Mm -hmm. Villa and Spurs that were trying to, to break, break in. Breaking in, in yeah. there. Yeah, and you just crazy. Think, we had you know, a great they... game, didn't we? Everton, Villa, do you remember? Oh, yeah, I scored two and then we lost last minute. <laughs> oh, I got in. <laughs> <laughs> got in. Yeah. Yeah. Got, hold on, so you scored, scored two. two. Yeah, in that game. Well, I scored in that game as well. Yeah, yeah and actually, the, Young actually Young scored too. Young he scored. Yeah, you scored like on a red kick, like a yeah, kind of. Well, yeah, it was. Mm. I see. Yeah. It was. I wonder why game. you both <laughs> brought it up. <laughs> 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 they both, they both look amazing. Yeah, yeah, from yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. Upstairs for an hour talking about it. <laughs> you bring that up. Actually. I told you, I told you. Nah, we bring that one up. No, because we were both going for top four, wasn't we? it was a massive game. That I remember that it was around Christmas time. Do you know what? I actually remember now, my middle one, uh, middle son, Rocco, he was just born and my missus was watching it, the game at home, breastfeeding. Oh, I scored after 38 seconds yeah. and literally she nearly threw, threw him out of her arms <laughs> oh, wow. at home. And then... Uh, I can't even imagine what that... And then, <laughs> what do you mean by impact? That? Yeah. And then he's running oh, games. Wow. <laughs> he's not with us now, but he's... <laughs> he was a great lad. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of them games where uh, after the game you know, you've been obviously at Villa yeah. Youngie, Gabby if you want days off you, oh. you know get into the lads to give get into yeah, the gaffer yeah. 
So he's like, Gabby, get into the gaffer, give us days off. This is mid-season, by the way, it's in December. And he give us, we play on Saturday, and he give us off till the following Thursday. Oh. So the lads are booking up, Dubai, Miami, everywhere. Going back, obviously I was going back to a baby, he had a bomb on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Some goal, though. <laughs> <laughs> that experience of the Merseyside derby, though, just bringing it back to that, talk us through how it was for you the very first time that you stepped out. Yeah, must have felt so intense, and yeah, yeah, well, it was mad. Was it? Obviously, and, and I always say this: like, it was intense, and it is. But like, derby games are derby games, regardless of who you're playing for. Like, there's no way the, the Merseyside Merseyside derby means more that than Wolves West Brom does to them fans. You know what I mean? So, I was kind of used to that atmosphere, and it was probably less violent than Wolves West Brom, to right. be honest. It was kind of weird. The first time I'd seen fans sitting together, like, <laughs> like back then, Everton and Liverpool fans were mixing. I was like, wow, that's, that's quite nice. You know what mm. I mean? And it helps when you win. But yeah, it was a massive, massive occasion. I had friends come up and um, yeah, which, to, to, like, I don't think they'd won at home for a number mm. of years. And yeah, three But when you win and you go out in town, like, did, yeah, did I didn't not, go out in town that week. Nah, I didn't. Because you're, no, you're, not, you're not sure you're going to win. So you don't want to gamble on going out and then no, but if you change win, your plans. Yeah, not I guess, spontaneous. Not, not, not on a derby day. You don't, yeah, because there's going to be Liverpool fans out there as well. That's remember. True. So you got to, yeah, Ooh. pay your respects to them. That happened to him there, though. Right? I remember, like, with, with Fellaini, like, Kale, yeah. like, um, Yakubu, yeah. AJ. It's not nice. Yeah. yeah. Joseph wasn't Jordan. a nice place to go, was Hard, it? Yeah. Like, like, Fellaini, for instance, I always remember, like, when, like goal kicks from his lap, he used to drop him in. I'd be like, oh, fucking hell. I, I, I actually know what it's like to play against me now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's, what I mean? What's like, most big of that elbows. hair, though? Like, nah, how nah, tall nah, was he? Nah. Like, like, his elbows were up here, wasn't yeah, 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 it? He had the best, like, neck throat control yeah. we used to, like, that was our set piece we had throw-ins and that we used to throw Back it to like to his neck and he just like, like bring it down yeah. remember them crazy I've it's never heard of that so you would, like you would practice like aiming yeah, yeah. for the that for was the a real neck. strategy to ours because we knew it was in an area where he can't be fouled or he can't be attempted to, to tackle because it's a clear foul if you're trying to Kick someone in the neck. Mm. <laughs> but you can control his elbows. Yeah, you yeah. Get, it was like, you just can't get in that space. Yeah. So you can just play it kind of in there and it, mm. he just holds you off from anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I was similar to I used to do it in some ways, but he yeah. was uh, he was very good at it. Yeah. Met my match. <laughs> <laughs> He's still playing as well. He's yeah. still playing that in China. Strong team. So, obviously, Everton went well for you. Um, when did when did the City thing come about? Um, third season. Um... Similar kind of time, really, as like probably around March as the as the Everton move came, and I think teams are recruiting then and trying to see what's what. Uh, Were they desperate to keep you, Everton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, there was. It, but just like anything, you've got to recognise what stage your career's at and the ambition of that club and cities wasn't the same at the time. And mm. and yeah, it's probably obvious now, but. It wasn't at the time mm. because I don't think Man City had finished above Everton in mm. the yeah. previous like five or six years, you know what I mean? So, but the players they were signing and talking about getting, so it was just an opportunity that I thought I can't miss. And mm. yeah, as great as my time at Everton was, I, um, I don't regret joining Man City. How, how did they get you then? What was it that <clears throat> made so, you want to move? Is this like? story true? Meeks? Yeah, Meeks was involved. There's a lot of people that are claiming <laughs> to be involved in that, to be fair. But no, Meeks yeah. was involved because I was close with Micah before, before City. So that like, we kind of broke into the England setup at similar times, and so I was close with Meek. So we used to speak, and yeah, um, he made me aware that they were interested. And I heard him talk the other day about <laughs> he said he was going to be part of the deal. <laughs> Going the other way, I think he was. Really? Yeah, yeah, I think he really so was. Big, I don't know, yeah. but we didn't know at the time. We didn't. We wasn't unaware of that. So yeah. he's like kind of doing recruitment for Man City and Mark Hughes, and Mark Hughes is trying to. Him. Offload him. Yeah. So he's trying to help yeah. you there. Yeah. yeah. And Mark Hughes is saying, you can have him in return. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't, we didn't know. We didn't know. Because I'm no thinking, because if I, he knows that, if I know that and he knows that, then it's, it's awkward, isn't it? Yeah, 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 <laughs> it's yeah, awkward, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Much. So yeah, I, I learned, we learned after. No way. Yeah, he's kind of, because I said we were close, so mm. it was an so easy So then I suppose when you, when you arrived there, like, is, is it awkward? Like, once you find that out, like, no, it was after, it was way after, oh, was because way now, after. so now we're not going and Mix is established oh, okay. and he's playing and stuff like that. So it was never, it's never awkward between me and him because yeah. it wasn't, I weren't saying, I'll oh, come if you let him go, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Or he needs to be part of the deal, but yeah, he was. When, when you signed there, when was, how quickly did you win your first trophy? 2011 was the FA Cup. 
Yeah. Says. So was that two years? So I joined in 2009, so, so yeah. Two years, Yeah. won the FA Cup, and then that was and the start, start of, of the it, yeah. So that was the, that was the first trophy of in like like 30, this era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The FA Cup was like 34 years Ooh. before the fir- before the trophy before. So that and first it's, one must have been massive. Oh, it was like, massive. And you know what? Was like We never grew up wanting to win the Premier League. Mm. You, you want to win the FA Cup, yeah. and you, you can really picture mm. that and see them things because that was the competition that everyone's involved in and stuff. So that was a massive moment for me. But yeah, that was kind of the, the realisation of we're going we're gonna to crack on. And it's funny, like speaking to fans after that, like loads of fans saying that's the first trophy I've seen the club win. And it seems kind of weird to hear that now. Yeah. But like at that time, it was like, oh yeah, I'll, you take for granted that there's been success. But no, that wasn't that's the case. That's where it kicked on from yeah, yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, Tevez... Was oh. obviously that. Can we just talk about Tevez as a player and your experience of him? Is it you signed the same what, with those Tevez yeah, and Adebayor? Adebayor, Adebayor. Colo, Gareth what, Barry. What was it like to train with Tevez? Carla, was Carlos was okay in training. He wasn't Carlos Tevez you see on a Saturday, but we, yeah. we, we all knew that. So that was accepted. There's so a lot just of them that. Unlocked a different mode. Oh, yeah. When it come. Yeah, you could see. There's that, a different, I heard that from the United Boys as well. Yeah, it's you like, could see. He's a different player to, in training. Different application. Yeah, yeah. yeah, his qualities was the same. Mm. But in terms of application, it was just, yeah, kind of go through the motions a little bit. Not, not take the piss, but like fifty yeah. percent. But then come match but day, accepted because of match yeah, day. Yeah, match you day. Know, like he, he, he like... closed down back fours on his own. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, yeah, he won us games multiple times on, it, his on his attitude days. on a Saturday. Like it felt like he carried teams at the time. Oh, I did. Like he was. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And you, so I find that hard to imagine. But it, but then when you think about, it, you're thinking. How many times a week can you do that? Mm, yeah, true. Yeah, and he was doing it like twice a week if there was two yeah. games. But yeah, it was no question of his his attitude in games. And your personal relationship with him, like he yeah, was it's a good, fine. Good yeah, lad. Was yeah. He, I, kind I never of, really knew much about the Carlos kind of was a really good the guy. Or? Nah, Carlos was was really good. He was captain, and he was a player's captain. Do you know what I mean? You get captains that are great for the club, but Carlos was great for the team. And it's funny story. Like he, um, we were traveling to a European game and. This is the time when you're traveling when there's like the media and stuff on the back. So everyone gets on the plane with the, uh, the players and, and the club. And it, well, it's not the case now. But so we were sitting, like, say, the business business seats. And then there's some board members and stuff a little bit further behind. And then at the back was like media and all that. And you take two young lads to go with you, don't you? And uh, so we're sitting, everyone has the same seats. So we're sitting at, on the seats now and we, we're taking off. Carlos is there and as he's leant back he's seen like the young lads that are travelling with us that are sitting in the like the economy seats behind like the curtain and then he's like the seatbelt signs got, gone off he's got up walked to the front and told Mancini he said oh, you need to move because they could play tomorrow you, you won't play tomorrow so you, you need to move and he's got up no he got up, and the, manager got up. Ma- manager, the manager got up because Carlos was like as much as people say everyone else Carlos had the power like Carlos was coming from United the, the owners kind of really embraced Kyla so it was different and he got up and then the two young lads came and sat at the front of the plane Shut what? Up. that's what I knew what he was story. sat that's in the gaffer's seat yeah. no no they, no, they were sitting yeah they no, were there but, but they got, got up, up and yeah, sat yeah 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 because Kyla said come you're going to sit up there and like they just got up but not thinking anything of it they just thought there were seats available yeah. but the manager actually got up and yeah man wow is that that was probably when that's unbelievable that was before the Bayern Munich situation so that was probably something yeah. the manager held oh, harboured yeah, 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 harboured yeah, yeah, yeah. if oh, I could get my own back do you know what talking to Mancini right there's a bit he's been I suppose there are a few people come out giving him a bit of heat recently where do you stand on, on him on, no on Mancini this, on oh, this Mancini. podcast yeah we've had a couple of people yeah on yeah yeah there's, he's not, spoken about him he's liked by the fans not by the there was conversations at that time literally topics were how can we win the league and get the manager to sign <laughs> at the same time <laughs> How, how does that happen? Wow. And you had to pick one. Like literally, he, yeah, he, he's... Well, if, if he did it on purpose, he's a genius. And if he didn't, he's crazy. Like, so we played at Everton. The year we won the league, Yaya's away. Our form had gotten a bit inconsistent then. So we come in, we lost 1-0. And uh, we come in after the game. And he's going, he's like, oh, shit. You will never win a game without Yaya Torre. The place erupted. It erupted. Oh. I thought, oh... Everyone, just, oh, like, like that was it. But but like, if he's done it for that reaction, then you're a genius. Yeah. But I don't think he did. I think he yeah. just said it because he felt that way. And he said to me like, I don't blame you. 
I blame me for picking you. Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. oh wow! <laughs> yeah, it was deep. <laughs> It was deep. It was yeah, deep. Yeah, it's a good shout, though. You got, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was is, deep. Uh, it was cutting. deep. Yeah, yeah. He's man, got some one liners in there, yeah, man. Yeah. Imagine breaking up with someone like that. Well, I, don't well, blame you. I don't blame you. It's my fault. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's me. With you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I should have known. <laughs> Oh my god! Shit. I don't even know how you take that. I don't know how you. I just yeah, but I knew like, we weren't. We never got un. Nah, nah, nah. We never got unlike. I would never. If it was to be fair, if when it was me. I never used to retaliate to managers or, mm. it, but like there was a couple of times he lost it with Meeks and I had to expose him a little bit then. Mm. And then he lost it with Joe Hart and I exposed him a bit more then. And then that was kind of where we were never, we never got on mm. after well, field. When you said like the switch happened, was there anyone who went back at him? No, but I'm going to give you a story about someone mm. that did. This could be the best story I've. I've oh, well, well, well. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> Could be the best. Oh, so, and, and, he didn't, and he didn't know. This is how genuine it is because he wasn't aware anyone was watching. So um, in the build up to the Derby game, 6-1, he used to do the prep in the middle of the pitch and he's telling the players where he wants. So he's telling Samir Nasri to do what he wants him to do. But David Platt's on the side and he's telling him to do something different. So he's half listening to both and doing different things at different times. And then manager lost his head. He said, Samir, you're not doing it. Go in. So Sammy has gone in and with no retaliation. So I'm thinking, that's not like Samia. Sammy has got something in him to retaliate a little bit. Gone in. Manchini's doing like sit-ups and stuff in the gym. And the, the old the old school was like a gym down the bottom and then there was like a, a balcony. But if someone was up there, you couldn't see. So I was up there doing my stuff. I've I've heard Samia come in. He's gone, you outside. I'm like, huh? He's gone. Fucking outside now. Sorry, I, don't, I, don't, I know you can swear, but I don't like swear like that. And he's gone, you will never speak to me like that again. I'm not Mario Balotelli. Get outside. So he's like, Mancini's got up and he's got, come to my office, come to my office. He's going, no, no, I'm not coming into your office. He said, get outside now. He's calling him outside to have a fight with him. <laughs> but hold on, hold on. Oh, you're, but you're just peeking. And I'm just peeking. <laughs> <laughs> like that one. I'm, there, I'm, just trying, uh, I'm just like, I could see from afar really what's going yeah, on. But no one I'm else like, can see that. No, no. Me and one of the young goalies <laughs> up there. So I'm just like, whoa. He's speaking to the manager like that. <laughs> He's offering the manager anyone, outside. The manager is saying, come outside. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up. Come wow. outside. You will not speak to me like that again. This is how I got loads of respect from uh, Samir because yeah, he did he it, did it. O- on, yeah, his own. Yeah. on his own. It wasn't tr- for show. I'm going to go and we're going to have a conversation. So the man just come in and say, Samir, calm down. He said, no, I'm not calming down. I'm not Mario. You won't speak to me like that again. And then that's like calming down. And then Platt is come. David Platt, the man just come and said, Samir, yeah. <laughs> he says to me, calm down, anyway, shut up. <laughs> You're just here to suck his dick. <laughs> Fucking I said, no hell. way. So me I took everyone out. He wow. took everyone out. I said, yeah. So me went up in my estimations wow. after that. Imagine if he was on the balcony doing that. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Might be the best story wow. I've heard on this Brilliant. podcast. Oh, Hilarious. Brilliant. Yeah, it's up there. Fair play to him, though, for doing that That's away from saying. everyone. That's what I'm saying. And That's... he would do that, to be fair. Samir was, he was, he was consistent with his uh, frustrations or whatever. But who that, won the fight? Uh, they didn't go outside. No, they didn't. Didn't go outside. Yeah. But, like, I, the Never problem is I've seen, I've just seen, like, like a lot of people, like, um, that I've spoke to as well, you know, just yeah. had a real kind of... There's a real tension with him, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it is. Yeah, just kind of how he spoke to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't, as I said, it wasn't necessarily genuine. So out of the course of that period, like the players that have come in and yeah. out the door, who is the best? Probably say Yaya. Yaya was one you'd like, again, I don't see in training, but mm. in the game. And going back to your mm. question, he was the best. Like David Silva was the best footballer, mm. like consistent and beautiful and... Yeah. But yeah, yeah, Torre. Well, he, he, he just like when he, he was winning games like on his that's own. What I'm, that's why. That's why. That's why. No, yeah, 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 that's yeah. why I justify the the player like like a bit like Stevie, like yeah. people that can Match winner. If they, if he played well, you won. Yeah. There was no other outcome to the game. Like I've seen David Silver at um, Anfield scored two, it was unreal. I mean, last three two, mm. that would never happen with Jaya because he would just be able to impact the game yeah. at every level and. Every scenario, he just yeah, yeah he was he was different. What was it? What was it about him? You know, because I remember at Barcelona, it felt like he was almost like a holding player. Everything, and then he came to to City, and, and I kind of saw a real new. It was like 
you know, he goes going past front. people, yeah, yeah, yeah. taking free kicks. He, I think he, he could can... just have the ability to do whatever it was asked of him. And mm. at Barca, he didn't need to do that, did he? You got Iniesta and Messi and them players. You, just, I don't need you like to dribble. But yeah. then for us, we need you to do that as well. And it was he was there a while and we played Sunderland. They had a corner. It broke to him on the edge of our box. And he ran the length of the pitch with the ball past Kim Richardson, who was pretty quick. Mm. And we were like, huh? Mm. We didn't even know you could run like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> like, why, why you been hiding this all this time? <laughs> yeah. And that was it then. He played as a 10 and never looked back. But yeah, yeah, yeah similar to like Jude now, wherever you ask them to play, yeah. they will play and contribute. His finishing doesn't get spoken oh. enough about for his game because he could... Fi any finish, any. cultured, like whip this way, Power. like strike, like culture, like finish, like a side foot one. He had, he had the lot, didn't he? Every yeah. no, and, no, was... and match winning goals as well. Every, every, everything. He just literally could do everything. He could play short. He could switch play. He could run with the ball. Like that season, I think my the second title we won was thirteen, fourteen, or fourteen, fifteen. That season that he had could be the best season I've seen a midfielder have. I think yeah. he gets like 10 goals or 20 goals 11 assists like yeah, his incredible. pass accuracy is like 94% for the season you know what I mean and he weren't like yeah. passing it short he, yeah he's a joke he's a joke mm. Can I, I, got, I can't not speak about sitting and ask you about Mario Balotelli <laughs> and um, how you found him because we had Wayne Bridge on here and Bridge didn't like him he didn't yeah get on with I, I him. get that yeah. I can get that but I, I, I think that was mainly due to his relationship and what he was allowed to get away with rather than him like you've got to think Mario was young Mario was like 20, 21 when he joined so he's coming from a new country obviously getting paid a lot of money and it was kind of the club potentially wasn't ready to harness that profile of player and people wanted to see Mario for whatever reason he was the guy. He was the chosen one in terms of the personality and the hype. And he did intrigue people. Yeah, didn't yeah. He? For whatever reason, whatever he did, he did some mad stuff. But yeah, he, I would just put it down to him being young and mm. like when he came. When I think about it now, he's like a year older than my oldest son. Like I would expect my son to do some of the stuff he was doing. Mm. You know what I mean? And not know, especially if he's going overseas and yeah, it's yeah. totally new for him. Mm. I remember going to I remember going to Panacea a few times, and uh, I remember going my way in there. Like he'd park his, he yeah. had a camouflage Bentley, Bentley yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. I'm not joking. The doors there, the bounce here, and this camouflage Bentley's there, yeah. right, right next to the door. <laughs> and obviously it's camouflage, right? But you, you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like, visible. Man, he's got a game the next day. Do you know what oh, I mean? It's yeah. like, like things like that. You just think like, I yeah, need... but that, but that's a different culture. So like, he, yeah. he wasn't a drinker. Yeah, he would have cigarette or fag or whatever yeah. but he wasn't a drinker but they would go out for dinner night before Ooh, games yeah. and that was an Italian thing that we don't get yeah we, would we don't get we still don't get but in terms mm. of where he's come from and what he's he's up to was yeah there was a lot to Crazy, take in and the same that same um restaurant bar or whatever I remember being upstairs it's like oh, it's quiet tonight like, not really not really feeling it all of a sudden within 10 minutes it was like packed yeah and I was like oh, fucking hell it's got lively quick anyway and obviously it was Mario had come in but his entourage oh. had made the club full. And yeah. then he thought, I'm not having it. And left, I thought, oh, shit, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had that many people come with him. Yeah, he was rolling like, deep. He was rolling deep. Yeah, like, what was all that about? A lot I, of them were like local, like from yeah, Manchester. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But to be fair, there's the only entourage that was that strong was probably Carlos's, but his was like from where we grew up. So back in the day when it was a different setup, like, I used to go into the canteen and people, randoms used to be in there just eating dinner. If you didn't go up a day after training and get your dinner, you might not be nothing left when you go in after training. I'm like, Mario, you can't bring 20 people into, into the canteen. But is, that just, is that just him? Was it just him who could even get away with that? Oh, yeah, thing? yeah. He could get away with a lot more than, than most. Like him and Mancini's relationship was different to what I've seen coaches and managers, have, uh, players have because he'd, I think he'd give him his debut, but he'd known him since he was really young and he kind of had a different setup with him. But... I remember he got sent off. He got gone into the dressing room and the manager followed him in there. And the kit man saying, I had to go in there and they're fighting. They're fighting in the, in the and the game's on. But the manager's not even outside. <laughs> He's literally <laughs> in the changing rooms fighting with Mario about getting set off. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? But like that stuff would only happen with them two. Yeah, Couldn't happen yeah, with yeah. anyone else. Wow. I never realised what a double at they were until I've spoken to you today. Mm. No, I did. Oh, yeah, I yeah, knew yeah, there, yeah. Was, they, there was always... There's pictures of them actually... There's one picture, I think yeah. I've got it on early Jay. Instagram. 
and the training when because Mario was strong as well. Like he couldn't, you couldn't just move him around, even though he was like young. And he's he's going off, and the Mar manager sending him in, and he's and then he's he said, get in Mario. So he's grabbed him, he's trying to move him, but Mario just stood there. He's not having it. Yeah. The manager's like slipping and just trying to move <laughs> him. I've seen that, that, that one. Yeah. yeah, they were a bit of a double lap, weren't yeah. they? Fucking hell, mad. And then this was where you had your first experience of Champions League football. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that. How how was that the first time that you step out and you hear the anthem and yeah, special get the like, badge on the arm. Yeah, yeah, them, them things are probably the things that I take for granted, don't they? Mm -hmm. Like when you see the badge, it's a different kit. It's, the music's different, and players that I played in there said when you hear that music, it's gonna feel different. You're like, yeah, we'll see, and then you hear it, and it's like, whoa, whoa. this yeah. feels nice. That yeah. and then it was a different again, just a different atmosphere. That first game stepping out, do, what was that? Who were you? Who were you against Napoli? Napoli, yeah, the strong Napoli team as well. To be fair, but the occasion itself was was special. Um, and again, it's just growing up. It wasn't a thing that I thought of. You watch Champions League, but you're not thinking my goal is to play in the Champions League. It's just mm. to play football. And then as you kind of get further into your career, you realise that's an ambition and that's a possibility. Do you know? Do you know? I, uh, we've talked about this on the pod. I, when I was growing up, I was a Chelsea fan, right? But you go back with Tottenham and uh, and Liverpool. You know, various teams. You get absolutely abused. You don't really feel the same way anymore. So I wouldn't <laughs> class myself as that at yeah, all. Yeah, I know what you mean. So but, like when I when I kind of like think about you, like now I kind of even though you had some great years at Everton, yeah, I kind of I see. kind of see you as a mm. city. Yeah, like, yeah Is that yeah. who you would kind of look out for now? Or, or yeah, like? to be fair, like City and Wolves mainly because my kids, uh, my oldest is a City fan and my youngest is a Wolves fan. So we kind of follow them teams. I don't not follow other teams, but mm. probably Villa. Yeah, there's like you're saying yeah. there, the abuse that yeah. happened there um, kind of tarnished that relationship. But that was your boyhood club. Yeah, man, that's what that's, it hurt. That's yeah, what it, does, it hurt to it be part hurt. of that. And that's yeah, the same yeah. with me with Chelsea, really. Like, yeah. that, that was, that hurt, you know, it does hurt a bit because you stood among them. Yeah, that's you know what I'm really saying. I've been to games and I've been there and had the shirts and watched mm. their special occasions, but then... When it gets to a personal level, mm. that's so. What's the, what's the issue at Villa? Like, obviously, obviously, you obviously getting relegated mm. was massive, um, and to be a part of that, that just hurt. But then when it was kind of like it kind of got personal, the criticism mm. got personal to me uh, about my accident. Family members, like my mum and dad, wife, kids, and I, come to mm. pretty much every game, like everyone's almost. They couldn't come to them games. Like I'm playing for the team I wanted to play for the most, mm. and they can't come because they're getting abuse. I'm getting abuse. And I was like. Yeah, was that was kinda. that for performance? That was just because you were getting relegated. Or it was, was it more yeah, to it? no, it was. There was probably obviously more to it. Oh. They fought around about the tweet. Oh yeah, um, this is probably the first podcast that has not asked me about the tweet. By the mm. way, so credit to you. Yeah, uh, we're we're pending, pending. Pending. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, got it there before you. But yeah, again, just again, just being part of it and mm. the kind of perception of what I was coming to do wasn't the reality. So, like. Like you're saying, they're associating me with Man City thinking I'm going to come and potentially save the day or whatever. That wasn't the case. Mm. We weren't good enough. I wasn't good enough. And we went down and yeah, it was like me, Gabby and, and Micah at the time was kind of made to be the reasons for that. And it was that wasn't the case. There were so many more elements to why Aston Villa went down that year. Like the, the chief exec, sporting director and the recruitment, it was their first time ever doing a job. Mm. Sh Tim yeah, Sherwood's first right. season, like pre-season, we'd sign <coughs> players from a league that never played in a Premier League. So there's so many new factors to it. And then when you're, it's all going wrong, who do you lean on? Does, do we lean on the manager that is relatively new? Does he lean on the board that are new, totally new? And yeah, it was just a chaotic a period. But was there anything outside of your control there that if that's your boyhood club, was there never really a chance for you to just kind of reach out to the fans or find a way to communicate your your sort of and reiterate your love for the club for what it represented to you did you ever feel that you got that opportunity or no nah, i never got the opportunity i probably should have and could have like via, via social media and stuff like that but it was never um a real opportunity kind of why I, like now i don't really do stuff with talks but for that reason because stan Collymore was there at the time and he kind of got really personal to the point of where i was saying i text him and said come then let's Let's meet up. Mm. If, it, if it's that serious, it doesn't have to be on Nazarene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nazarene. Nazarene. Yeah. I said to him, yeah, come then, let's, let's just that. <laughs> then cool. And and you'll know, he said, he's kind of come for me to the point of where Gareth Barry said, do I need to come out and say some stuff about it? And I'm thinking, if Gareth Barry's coming out and yeah. saying stuff, then yeah. you're definitely in the wrong, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it just felt the point of where they wanted to create a distance between 
the reality and of the club and what the state they were in. Like Villa weren't finishing tenth, and then we went down. That was seventeenth mm. the year before. You know what I mean? So mm. it was going to be inevitable. And then you sell Benteke and Fabian Delph, who's fifty percent of your goals. Yeah, you're going to struggle. Mm. But again, I played my part and. It just hurt because it was Villa. Has it mellowed like kid? when you see Villa fans? Now, yeah, like a little that, bit, a little it, bit, it, but yeah. not, not still. It's still, still quite spicy. Mellowed, yeah. yeah, it's like the Everton one. Mm. That is mellowed like completely. That's mm. kind of like they recognise what I did when I was there mm. more than anything, rather than the way it ended. But in terms of the Villa, there's still a little bit of spice there, and yeah. I understand because I still played a part in Villa going yeah. down, so I get it for that. But the fans don't understand what. Stuff, oh, the other stuff. All the noise yeah, in the yeah, background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that only comes out in podcasts and down, yeah. down okay. the time frame. So, yeah. all right. Well, if since every other podcast asked, I've got to ask you about this week. <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, what happened? <laughs> Literally nothing. So, and it's funny, like, and I don't know if I've said this numerous times or whatever, but that's actually Jack Grealish's car. Ooh. And he either hadn't had a license at the time, and I was helping him source a car and stuff. And he said, oh, what do you think about this? And I was like, Jack. You're gonna get insured on that, mate. Like it's your first car. That's that's a lot. It's a lot going on. So I said, there's a version of that car with a smaller engine, and that. So that picture was just on my phone from that, and literally driving home, it came out on Twitter, and I got a phone call from my brother. He was like, "What, what, are, you, what are you doing?" I was like, "I'm just on the way home." It was after a uh, Liverpool game. I think we lost yeah. heavily, and it came out then, and then. Like he said, well, this has happened. I was like, well, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I'm driving home. I said, I'll sort it out when I get home. Because I, and if you look back in the history of my Twitter, I never tweeted after games, win or lose. It wasn't the time to say, well done, Ooh. thanks mm. for supporting. Or yeah. I've just, never done that. Either. Yeah, I just never did it. So to do it after a defeat that heavily, yeah. it was mad. And it was funny because, like, again, when it gets personal, you know, it's like mums and they get upset. Ooh. And she was like, why don't you tweet a picture of your real car? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I had a Rolls Royce at the time. <laughs> I was like, mum, that, uh, that's not really going to solve it, mum. <laughs> so I got to leave it. <laughs> I've just accidentally yeah. tweeted a picture of Steve Jobs over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me do a crouchy. Yeah. New iPhone. <laughs> just keep an eye out for it, everyone. You'll see that one. iPhone on 15. <laughs> um, is it, did, if that's, I don't get one sent through, is, is it a good one? Oh, is it yeah. a good one this year, Steve? <laughs> What's what's mad is I think you the way you have to explain it is because it's such a hard thing to to fathom that you Ooh. can tweet that and at, at the time where maybe fans were kind of looking at it and going oh it's just a kind of it's a bit of a kind of yeah. cue for, yeah, yeah, for yeah. like that wasn't it I would never do that to any fan never alone Villa fans that I was part of that mm. fan base you know what I mean so that was never the case um, and I've never took it down for but that what reason. a mad thing to have to keep explaining oh, a my tweet. God. I, <laughs> yeah. That's, do you know when like the truth is so unbelievable that mm. like, people you, you need to spice it up I'm like I can't spice it up <laughs> yeah. it's the truth like I can't do any more than... I think you just got to lean into it I think just accidentally tweet the odd thing here or there no but the like, amount of fans I mean, that have like... tweeted me saying I believe you now like, it's happened to me oh, I'm like really? yeah I don't have people that have sex without like no one's ever pocket dialed anyone or sent mm. something that's random you're thinking how has that happened and like literally Mm. I couldn't. Oh, it's one of those, it, isn't yeah. it? And also, if, I think you're right. The natural thing to do is to kind of read into it and read the message on it. You've tweeted a picture of a car. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking random. Could have been a lot worse. Could have been all yeah. the dick pics you had. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, my phone. I don't know. You're messaging. What kind of setup you got at home, man? It's, you know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a word of warning from Jolie and Lescott, everyone. Be, be careful yeah, yeah, with yeah, your yeah, photos. Well, yeah. What's his fault? Fucking Steve Jobs, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> New update, got me. Steve <laughs> Jobs. <laughs> well, this last bit, Joe, the, uh, England. How did you feel, obviously, like for you, I just, I, I feel for a lot of centre-halves. We had Ledley here oh. last week, you know. I feel for centre-halves in that era, if I'm honest. <laughs> Timing was... Yeah, oh, like now, for The instance, worst. You know, like... I'm, yeah, I'm getting you, caps. You're in all day, aren't you? 100 <laughs> I'm caps. caps. Yeah, I'm getting caps now, yeah. to be fair. Not, not necessarily because of the level, just reliability just, in terms of availability. The standard as well, like with Rio and JT especially, oh. um, you know, both 100 caps each. Like, hard to displace. But before that was like Sol Campbell, you know mm. what I mean? So yeah. if you look down in the history, you'd probably say, obviously, more Tony Adams, Sol Campbell, yeah, yeah. Rio, JT. Even just behind that with Woodgate yourself. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. So that them Jamie three Carragher. are probably in the best five. Ooh. And I'm, mm. I get rid, like, not get rid of, I'm trying to dispatch Sol Campbell and then mm. JT and Rio kind of, creating a partnership I'm yeah. like yeah this, the timing was it's way tough. off yeah tough way off 
So obviously should have got more caps. What did you? No, not should have because they no, were players, but yeah. I could have got more yeah. caps in a different year. But who knows? And as I said, like, to do it twenty six times was Ooh. was was nice. Yeah. Mm. And do you yeah, know? So obviously you work with the, you work with the twenty ones now. Yeah. You enjoy that? Obviously, yeah, I love it. And, and but it's not like the role says assistant coach, but that's not kind of my yeah. role. I don't necessarily get enjoyment at the whole perspective of a game or the high press and stuff it's more the detail side of it and the mentoring and holding lads to account and building the relationships that allow you to do that you know what I mean yeah. we've all had coaches that scream and shout but it don't warrant that because they haven't brought up a, a genuine relationship I don't know you care enough to yeah. then just scream and think you're doing it for the best reasons where I try to do that and try to have relationships with these players so mm. same way Paul Ince did for you yeah, yeah. yeah. literally that and TC who's an old coach of mine that was kind of like the mentor for me mm. he kind of developed that role and he was so important for my career so I just tried to implement that to a certain extent in you, lads. you've seen these praises Lee Carlsley's wasn't you I know oh. you played with him but you said when you when you, uh, and you worked with him yeah this was before the tournament as well like yeah I, but yeah. you said his relationship with the players I've never seen anything like, like it I've never seen a what, group of players how, why I don't know now? I don't know because really? it's not it's something he's built yeah it's yeah. something that he has just the chemistry that he yeah he has a genuine love for wanting you to do well and it's not hidden, it's not kind of, you're not thinking or questioning, he don't mean that. Mm. Like, you know, he means it. And like I've known him from, from playing with him and he's, he's a genuine guy, but to see that and to see he genuinely cares, like he hasn't, he's not just there because he can't get a job. You know what I mean? He wants to work in development football. He mm. has continuously developed players. Like he was at Brentford before Thomas Frank yeah. kind of recommended Thomas Frank to Brentford. So that could have been his job. You know, I'm saying he's still be in the job, but so he's had opportunities Ooh. to do terms bigger roles. But he wants to work in that kind of level of football in terms of developing players. Yeah, it's good to know, kind of, because it feels like we've got such a good group of young players coming through that they're in good hands. And like um, being around the 21s, obviously, there's a lot said about our players now, like and how good they are, really. But is there one that really sticks out for you coming through? <sighs> there's a, there's a lot to be fair and. You can't. It's hard do, to do yourself discourage though. Like I remember, correctly when we mm. were twenty ones. Like that was that was you. Mm. That was Gareth Barry. That was mm. like show like no, like the level has always been the level. Yeah. The level isn't like this isn't a new surprise of the level that we've seen at twenty ones because you like we're playing in the Premier League, mm. playing every week. So in terms of the level, it's just again it's probably more emphasised at the moment. And is there one player? <sighs> no, because they don't tend to be in Ooh. the twenty ones. Like if you think about it, it's probably Jude, isn't it? What is, He's yeah, playing for the seniors, about, yeah. yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, played, he had one cap. That was Wayne Rooney. Yeah, one cap for the twenty ones, and he's in the seniors. So I remember in, in, in yeah. our age group. I yeah. remember. I think Rooney and Michael Owen obviously were, were gone. Stephen Gerrard, yeah. and then like people are saying, who's the best one coming through? And, like Michael was eighteen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like he's it already come through. Yeah, like, like, you're talking about yeah. like you got Saka, Foden, yeah. Yeah. Jude Bellingham. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, and that's still the thing. that age group. Yeah, and you used to think you can't think well. Twenty ones mean seniors. Like, there's a whole batch of players that are like 24, 25. I hadn't met my England debut till I was like 24, 25. So Same. it doesn't necessarily mean you go straight out the 21s into the seniors. There's still a window mm. of players mm. that are can qualify for mm. that. Right, Jody, enough of you across the podcast, but uh, I appreciate chatting to you. But we we just got to get a bit of admin out of the way now, if you don't mind. A few messages. I've got one here from, from Ollie. He says, a while back, we managed to get a Peterborough Peter United player to come and play for our seven-a-side team, uh, BTEC Boys FC. Um, well, we, uh, we won 14-1 and it was a great evening. Uh, unfortunately, the opposition players tweeted the club chairman and the Six Aside Centre contacted the club to let them know he had played for us. The player got fined two weeks' wages oh, wow. and was banned from returning. Power League also issued us with a 10-0 loss as it was against <laughs> their rules to field a professional. Who knew that was a rule? Mm, well, I didn't know that. What a player that was. That's, yeah. that's harsh, that. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know of players that have active players that play with like balaclavas on and that. Really? Yeah. I saw. I saw one. Hold on a minute. Active players now yeah. that are playing yeah, yeah, with yeah. balaclavas. Oh, really? There's one that played in the PK's league as well. That, that league that he's got. Yeah. Either one of them played in that league and played with the Ballyon. But so, I know people that play in Manchester that have that's still playing now. At what? Yeah. So what? Obviously, you're not going to say their names. What level are these balaclavas players at? Elite level. Elite, Elite level. 
But imagine, you know, if someone turns don't, up no, in a no, balaclava. No, no. No, so, we're not going to say take it off. <laughs> no, of course you're not going to take it off. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Like, it's... No, because Manchester's grey, so it could be just be weather. This could be due to the weather. <laughs> You're have to play in the winter. Yeah, yeah, but now nah, we play. To be fair, we got. But a you team. play, don't you? Yeah, yeah you got a good team, man. Huh? Yeah, we've got. A, a, we're yeah, obviously none of us play, but we ex pros. We mm. we have a good go. We, well, we, we joined we the played, league. We? we joined Power League, yeah. but they put us in the bottom league because obviously we had to. Yeah. I think over the league season we conceded like three goals. So who who plays in your yeah. team? It's me, Stevie Island, Nader Manua, what? Alex Bruce, um, Danny Simpson, um, Dale Stevens. Um, Oh, Danny Drinkwater has Danny Drinkwater's Drinkwater's just come. Papa yeah, Cissé. Papa Cissé. Ravel Morrison. And, and, like, and the group. Livener side as well. Yourself, yeah, you? we play like, 11s. We play 11s, but obviously, like, there's a group chat. It's got like 50 people in. So like, like tomorrow's a game. Every Tuesday we play. We played yesterday. And then like one o'clock on a Sunday, it goes up. And then whoever comes in first gets to play and stuff like yeah, that. Is it 11 side, you say? We played 11 side yesterday, oh. yeah. But yeah, we play like regular. Like one of our, one of our guys is... Um, a coach at a like, semi-pro team and we played them pre-season and we give it to them. Oh, really? Hang on, yeah, do you, yeah, but for the Power League, do you ever, have you ever lost? <laughs> <laughs> power League? You can't lose Power We can't lose in Power so League. So you've never lost? No way. No way! No way. <laughs> no way. Because, oh, wow. you know what it's like? Ooh. Like, everyone can play for 10 minutes and then fatigue, yeah. like, mm. and we're not, then obviously wasting energy, then we're cutting off angles and it's all of a sudden, and then you've got like Stevie's lively. Steve, Stevie's yeah. one of the best players I've ever played with in yeah. training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stevie Marlon. What, yeah, nice no, serious. That's true, isn't yeah, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a real yeah. shout. Yeah. That's a real yeah. shout. Monday to Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't think like I mean, he's, he's done some great things in in football, but but in training, but in training, training small sided games is what he was made for. Yeah. Like he, uh, yeah, we just say go on, Stevie, and then we just like literally Moses split to the sides of the pitch. He'll just receive it and then just do what he's doing, and it's like me and Nadam at the back. Yeah, and yeah. Nadam's like, you know Nadam. Nadam's yeah. strong, like probably the strongest player I've ever mm. come across. But he's he's training as well now. He's like running. So he does the 100 meters in like under 11 seconds. So when really? the lads are turning up thinking he's just a big guy. No, no, he can move. Oh, fucking really. hell. I can't, I can't even but... imagine. I can't imagine turning up for seven aside and seeing you guys. Mm. The most we had it is um, we once managed to persuade John Joe O'Toole, oh, a yeah. name I never thought I would say on this podcast. <laughs> To um to join in seven aside and he fucking ran the show. Did he? Yeah, yeah. How do you think? How do you John think pin Jones? stars would get on with? Against well, these? I mean, this is just ludicrous, <laughs> isn't it? So I don't know where I stand. I mean, where you obviously you boys are going to be an advocate for professional footballers joining in at seven aside. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we, 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 we played, yeah. We played yeah, we together. Played. We did a we did a charity at five side, yeah. and then like, the winners obviously they were playing all day, and the winners played against us. But we me. played everyone, didn't we? And we, yeah. we didn't lose. No, we didn't lose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so so it's like golf, shouldn't it? It should be some sort of handicap. There was actually ended up in goal, and we didn't lose. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, J Mo broke his hand. broke his finger. We had David James in goal. That's the kind of thing. Yeah, the team was David James in goal, Jolian, Paul Konchesky. Yeah, still play. Yeah, myself, Joe Cole, Carlton Cole, Steve Sidwell. Trying to think of another. Graham Stack. Did Glenn uh, Jono was in there now? Glenn nah. Johnson. Yeah, he, he was strong. He was a strong team. And we, we, we just turned up yeah. with no warm up, and these lads are play regular, and we played every team and we beat them. We're in the messages bit, and there's a lot of people out there who do fancy themselves. Yeah. <sighs> right? So I challenge them to write in if you think you could beat this team that Jolian's has mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Get in touch. We'll document it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we might potentially film it, but don't get in touch if you're shits because we don't want to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't come, yeah, don't yeah. come baggy. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, what do you need? Do what you I'm need saying is if you video think, evidence or I don't something? Need video no, evidence, no, listen, we'll, you're not wasting time. No, we'll, we'll, listen, we'll all come down and we'll watch, we'll watch the game. We'll get the highlights and we'll get the... So we've got to trust that they'll say... that. You, be, so you're saying be honest. Well, you mm -hmm. plan a, they plan on a Tuesday night, right? So we can organise a game and then, you know, the winners get... For a night out, we travel. The whole okay, there you go. There we you travel go. for a night out. Well, the whole team, go, you know, the whole team gets to come to Crouchfest on us, right? If they beat us, we, we could do it on a morning of Crouchfest. Oh, hold Ooh. on. If they lose, <laughs> if they lose, like if they lose. Oh, oh do they, you know there's a they pitch. They go home. There's a pitch. <laughs> yeah, they can't. They can't even listen to other the podcast, mate. There's a pitch outside Crouchfest. Why don't we Who's say there? you Wembley. only get in Wembley. if you beat? You, yeah, I, I just I, yeah. there is, isn't Powerly, there? Like just outside. So what we say is, if if you genuinely think you can win, apply, but. You only get the Crouchfest tickets if you win that game on, yeah, the, on, that on game. the day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise, you're not, literally not able to walk next door. No, you wow. have to go home. No. You have to go <laughs> home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's make this happen. <laughs> let's make this happen. I know the thing is, okay, if they win, 
But they get crowd dressed singers and these have to go home. <laughs> 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 All the way back to Manchester. Way back. <laughs> what a Shut up, Crouchy. <laughs> what a great game. There's a lot of jeopardy on it. I like, DJ Freak. Lord Je- <laughs> What a game. Jeopardy on it. All right, Ollie, I, I, let's get back to the message. I think that's harsh. I think mean, yeah. that's harsh. Yeah. Uh, we've had a good chat about it, but... Two weeks. Um, yeah, that's a bit harsh. I mean, used to go for Manchester Balaclava. Got to pick up on something there. Jordan just said about DJing. Um, yeah. I wasn't aware... That you were DJing. I wasn't aware that this was this was your thing. This is huge. Yeah, this is like next passion in regards to right. what I love to do. Always kind of try and do as much as possible. Get lessons at a minute as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we we, we so chat about this kind of off yeah. air. Off air. You said you got mixtape so coming there, pending this pending. week. Yeah. Later today. Nice. Um. So yeah, there'll be a uh, mixtapes garage for yeah. us. Like nice. uh, no, right. really? yeah, 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 yeah. UK garage and that, nice. and then some house for the. New school. Okay, nice. Yeah. Right. We, we had a little school. bit of that last year at Crouchless. Like, we had So Solid, Lisa Mafia involved. Oh, wow, yeah. I'm not yeah, they all came down last year. Yeah, yeah, listen, you know, they all came down last yeah, year. Yeah, they're the people that we grew up on, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so. I'm oh, well, listen, you know, if you do fancy it, like, if we can, if we can, we can try and get you down DJing yeah, at Crouchless. Yeah, DJing and playing football. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry, man. Man. Working more than you, Crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm not actually going to be there, I've got to say. CGI. Right, boys, I've got an absolute bell to I've got a message from a. Our official solicitor, podcast oh. solicitor, Amrik. Amrik. Um, so it says, every Wednesday I drive into court or the office listening to the pod. However, this morning I spat my coffee out and almost crushed my car when Crouchy began reading out my email. Truly magical. <laughs> I went through the years and years of studying for this very moment. Let's do this. I will be the official solicitor of the pod. We've got one. Solicitors charge ridiculous fees, so let's offer free legal advice to all pod listeners. I'll also note that Peter is willing to leave San Marino for Chris in his will. Consider it done. <laughs> oh, yeah, this oh, was really? the last podcast, yeah. yeah, yeah Abby's. Yeah. Uh, Are you happy with that, Chris? Mine, mine when he dies. So he's going to draw that all up. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll watch more back. So he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's put here, get me into Crouchfest and let me take on those silly Wembley rules that are in place. Heck, get me down to Maidenhead game with the boys. I will come dressed as if I was going to court. Hell, I will even wear the gown worn in court. <laughs> Let's try all the loopholes. If anyone has a problem, I will be there ready to take them on in my full court attire. As long as it doesn't cost me my job, I'm ready to get involved with absolutely wow. anything. Wow. So if we go down to the Maidenhead game, we could bring him down in his... In his full court. I think yeah. we need to do this, don't we? So just a picture of the scene. It's me with a periscope over the fence, Crouchy feeding me a beer, and a guy in a wig and a funny gown and that yeah. next door waiting for some security, some poor, poor security to turn up and basically say, you can't be doing that. And him turn around and go, yes, I <laughs> Why is the gown needed, though? <laughs> it's not really. <laughs> it's, it's, for, it's just for visuals. <laughs> Lose the gown, man. Lose the gown. Lose just, the a and the just, 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 just a Just a briefcase. And a suit. <laughs> Yeah, briefcase. Yeah, briefcase. <laughs> I think a briefcase because anyone who's got a briefcase you take yeah, seriously, yeah, right? Good yeah, point. Yeah. Apart from the fella off in between us. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, you got a message about uh, from Graham, wasn't it? Yes. Has he done another voice note? Yes, I've got a uh, voice note here from Graham. Now, if you don't remember Graham, this was a guy who did a, uh, an Ed Sheeran impression. Can we hear it? This is the original. So here he is, Jodie, the original. When you said you looked a mess, I whispered. Underneath my breath, said you are, darling, you look perfect tonight. Hope you enjoyed that. Oh, wow. Hope you enjoyed, enjoyed that. that. <laughs> what a legend. Right, nah. So he's been back in touch, Chris. What's happened? He's been back in touch, yeah. I think what confuses about the last one is his voice. He sounds like he introduced it in quite a sensible way. Um, we've got uh, a message from him. Ready? Hey, guys. It's Graham here. Uh, happy to know that you enjoyed my cover of that great Ed Sheeran tune. Um, and I hope my reign can continue as the king of Ed Sheeran impressions with this one. Girl, you know I want your love. Your love was handmade for somebody like me. Come on now, follow my lead. I might be crazy, don't mind me, say boy. Let's not talk too much. Grab on my waist and put that body on me. Come on now, follow my lead. Come on now, follow my lead. Cause I'm in love with the shape of you You push and pull like a magnet do Although my heart is falling too 
I'm in love with your body. Cause last night you were in my room. Now my bed sheets smell like you. Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with your body. <laughs> Okay. Nah, it's fully That's invested. Not, it's not okay that. <laughs> it's not okay. Graham, keep sending them in, son. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Why are you encouraging that, oh, man? Oh, mate, it's brilliant. It's that brilliant. must be an app that he's using oh, or something. No, no, it's no. Just, I think it's just him. He just cracks up. Oh. I think once a month we'll have him on. Right. Oh, it's he's, he's he's great. It's fully yeah. invested. Oh, I love it. It's class. Brilliant. I think that, that wraps up a, another belter. Uh, yeah. Jolien, really, thanks for coming on, mate. I appreciate it. It was a good, uh, it was a great pod. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Yeah, see you soon.